Hello everyone, my name is Anya and today I would like to show you how to make those moss C2C, so corner to corner slippers. I hope you will enjoy this tutorial and thank you for watching. To create the slippers we will be working corner to corner moss stitch pattern. So we will start from one corner and we will increase the number of stitches in each row, creating half of the square. And then we will start decreasing the number of stitches, going down to create the square, full square shape. But we will not create the full square as we will not work the final corner. We will finish earlier, so actually our shape will have five corners. To make the slippers I was using 4.5 mm hook and 200 grams of pebble woolcraft yarn and the ball is 200 grams so you actually need just one ball of this yarn. We will start by working a slip knot. So twist your yarn and pull one end through. Insert your hook into the slip knot and tighten it. We will work chain three. Yarn over, pull through chain one, two and three. We will now work into this first chain made and we will work one single crochet into this first chain. So insert your hook into first chain, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through two loops. This chain two here will count as first half double crochet. We will work chain one, and we will work one more single crochet into this first chain. Into this first chain we will also work one half double crochet. So yarn over the hook, insert the hook into this chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. And first row is finished. We will start by working chain two. This chain two will work as first half double crochet. We will turn our work round and into this first half double crochet, we will work one single crochet. We will now need to work chain one and we will skip next single crochet. Into the next chain one space, we will work one single crochet. We will work chain one, we will skip next single crochet and into the second chain of starting chain Two, we will work one single crochet and one half double crochet. And the second row is finished. We will start by working chain two again. This chain two will count as first half double crochet. We will need to turn our work round and into first half double crochet from the previous row we will work one single crochet and we'll start repeating the pattern chain one skip next single crochet one single crochet into the next chain one space and again chain one skip next single crochet and work one single crochet into the next chain one space we will now work chain one we will skip last single crochet and into the second chain, if I can get there, of starting chain two, we will work one single crochet and one half double crochet. And this row, third row, is finished. Our pattern now will be worked in the same way, so we will start each row but working chain two, we will turn our work round, this first chain two counts as first half double crochet, 
and into a first half double crochet from the previous row, we will work one single crochet. And we will now be repeating the pattern of working chain one, skipping next single crochet and working one single crochet into the next chain one space until we reach last chain one space. So I will have two more repeats. So chain one, skip next single crochet, one single crochet into the next chain one and again chain one and one single crochet into the next chain one space. And when we have reached last chain one space, we will need to work chain one, we will skip next single crochet and into the second chain of starting chain two, we will work one single crochet and one half double crochet. And this row is finished and further rows will be worked in exactly the same way, just you will have more repeats in the middle. We will now carry on working the pattern increases in each row. So we will start each row by working chain two, which will count as first half double crochet. We will turn our work round and into the first half double crochet, we will work one single crochet. We'll then start pattern repeat for each row. So work chain one, skip next single crochet, and into the next chain one space, work one single crochet. And when you reach last chain one space and work your last single crochet into the last chain one space, we will need to work chain one and into the second chain of starting chain two from the previous row, we will work one single crochet and one half double crochet. And I marked sixth row, which was the length if you are using different yarn of about three inches, which is around 75 to 80 millimeters. And I am going to count from this row up to the corner here. So lengthwards to the corner here. And I am going to check the length against the, this length of the square against the length of my foot. And just remember that as it is crochet, it will stretch. So take this into account when you are deciding on the length of your slipper. And we will carry on. In the last row of increase, I would strongly recommend that you, for example, count the number of single crochet. I have made 30 single crochet in the last row of increase as the second slipper needs, needs to be exactly the same size and the last thing you would like to achieve is to have slippers with different sizes. So we will carry on until this length from the marked row up to this corner is the required length for your slipper. We will now start decreasing our work as we reach the point for the length of our slipper. And we will start by working chain two and this chain two will count again as first half double crochet. We will need to turn our work round and we will be working into the next chain one space. So we will skip next single crochet and we will work into chain one space working one single crochet. And we will start the pattern repeat. So chain one, skip next single crochet, one single crochet into the next chain one space. Again, chain one, skip next single crochet, work one single crochet into the next chain one space and carry on repeating this pattern of working chain one and then one single crochet into the next chain one space until you reach last chain one space and I will show you how to finish 
this row. When we finished our last repeat on working single crochet into the last chain one space, we will now work one half double crochet into this second chain of starting chain two. So just work one half double crochet into the second chain of starting chain two and this row is finished. I will show you again how to work the row of our decreases as we will continue in the same pattern working our further rows of decreases. We'll start by working chain two and again this chain two will count as first half double crochet. We will need to turn our work round and we will find our first chain one space. So we will skip first single crochet and into this first chain one space we will work one single crochet. And now we can start pattern repeat for each row. So working chain one, skipping next single crochet and working one single crochet into next chain one space and again chain one, skip next single crochet, work one single crochet into the next chain one space and we will carry on until we reach last chain one space and I will show you how to finish this row. When we finished our last pattern repeat on working single crochet into this last chain one space, we will now work one half double crochet into second chain of starting chain two from the previous row. So we will skip this next single crochet and this row is finished. We will now carry on working our decreases and we will stop when we have achieved the same length at the end of the row to the length we marked at the beginning, so working our increase. And what we will need to do is we will need to fasten off, so let me just move my camera a bit. We will work chain one, we will need to cut our yarn, leave a bit of a longer tail as this yarn we will use to join this part together, so the last row, and pull your yarn through. And you have finished the shape. We will now start joining and we will first join where you have finished your last row. We will fold our slipper in half and we will join both sides of this last row. And we will use this strand of yarn which is left over from fastening off after finishing this last row. So what we are going to do, we will insert hook on both sides of this final row and pull this yarn left over from fastening off through. And we will do it on the other side. So we will turn our work around and insert the hook again from front to the back and pull the same yarn through. And again, turn your work around, insert the hook into the next stitches, pull this yarn through and carry on working like this, so turning your work and pulling your yarn through both sides until you reach the other side of the slipper. So I have, I think, one more to do just at the end. Pull through. And I will now pull this yarn quite tight and I will insert my hook somewhere in this final row and I will again pull this yarn through and quite tight, I have quite tight loop, yarn over pull through to make chain and fasten off. And when we turn it around, this is how the toe end of our slipper is going to look. 
When we finished joining our toe side, we will again keep our work on the left side where we joined our toe and we will fold it again in half and we will be joining along this edge. So from this toe end up until the corner of our slipper. And I will show you now how to do it. We will now start joining along our edges, starting from this toe corner until next two corners. And what we are going to do, we will insert our hook through loops on both sides of our work, through both sides, yarn over and pull through. I just need to get this properly in. And now we will start joining, working, inserting our hook through stitches on both sides. I'm just using as few strands as possible, yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on the hook. And we will carry on joining like this until we reach the other end. And again, try to join using as few loops as possible, as you feel is comfortable for your work. So on both sides, yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop, oh, pull through the loop on your hook and carry on until you reach this end, so the corner end and I will show you what to do next as we are not going to finish joining the other side completely. We will need to leave a space for our foot to get in. So carry on working your slip stitch and join until the corner here. When we finish joining and we reach our corner, we will need to insert our foot into the slipper so it will look more likely like this. And we will need to mark a stitch where it is comfortable for us to insert our foot but on the other hand it is high enough that it looks all right on our foot. So mark this stitch and make sure that you mark the same distance on both slippers and we will carry on joining as we did before. So try to again catch only one strand, maximum two strands on, of the yarn when you are working your slip stitch, working along this edge up until the marked stitch and then fasten off and your slippers will be ready.